Hedge Hedge and welcome to Dwellers to another Mad Bag Gamer production. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a little something different than my regular walkthrough. I'm going to be bringing you the locations of all of the Stones of Fate, or the Standing Sometimes Stones, the or the Stone life. Signs throughout the entire game. Now, I'm going to start this with a helpful little book. Um, right now I'm in Dragon's Reach, which is the fortress within Whiterun, and I'm going to show you the location of a book that will mark on your map the locations of four different standing stones. And then I'm going to go around to uh, each stone individually, uh, show you its location and all of its bonuses. Um, I'm going to be doing absolutely every stone, not just the four in this book. Um, but the book can be helpful to get you started. Um, if you noticed, I walked right past uh, Jarl Balgruf, right up to the top of his uh, his Dragon's Reach Fortress. This isn't the very top, but it's kind of his war room. And uh, right back here on this uh, bookcase, you'll notice there is this Explorer's Guide to Skyrim. And when you open it, you'll notice that it says my map has been updated. And uh, if you were to read this, there are a few sections uh, where it describes different stones and kind of tells you where they are. But uh, even better than that, um, on your map, you'll notice, uh, I'm going to show you one that I haven't visited yet, but that uh, it put on my map. You'll see a little uh, grayed out indicator of where the stone is. Um, and this one's the shadow stone. It's actually the only one that the book reveals that I haven't visited yet. Um, so the book can help you get started, but uh, now I'm going to go around, find each one, show each one to you, show each bonus to you, and uh, then kind of give a rundown of what I think it's best for. Alright, so see you at the first stone. Alright, in your journeys, you will encounter a total of 13 standing stones. These are examples of the first three. Now, these are probably the ones that everybody already knows about, as you can tell on my map. These are the standing stones that are right outside of Helgen and uh, the little area that you escape from, uh, which is somewhere over in this area, uh, right at the beginning of the game. And you can just basically follow your main path and uh, come out looking uh, right down here, straight at these standing stones. Now, uh, to go over which ones they are and what they do, um, first let me summarize these three and one other as skill bonus signs. Um, what I mean by that is the Thief Stone gives you a 20% uh, faster uh, level up on all of your stealth skills. Uh, so if you're going to be somebody that, that specializes straight in the stealth skills, um, that's the way to go. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and list uh, which ones are stealth, which ones are uh, magic, and which ones are uh, combat or warrior considered skills. Uh, the second is the Mage Stone, and actually, this character's kind of a thief, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that sign, because I actually had it on a different one. And you can see that when you uh, accept the sign, it lights up, and then you can check its effect in your active effects. Down here I have the Thief Stone. All stealth skills increase 20% faster. Uh, then, of course, there is the Mage Stone. It is a 20% faster increase of magic skills. And then the Warrior Stone, 20% faster increase of combat or warrior skills. So those are the first three uh, skill-related stones. There's actually one other one called the Lever, and uh, we're going to go take a look at it now. The Lever Stone is on the far west side of the map, and uh, it's, it's probably closest to Markarth, which is uh, kind of easy to travel to by carriage. Um, and it's out on the cropping of a mountain. Um, now, the path to get up to the Lover Stone, uh, let's actually see if I can recall. It's off the back of this mountain. Um, I actually think it's pretty easy to come from Morthal and just kind of stick to the top of this mountain area, and then once you feel like you're in line with it, once it's like straight to your east, uh, just follow it out and you should be able to stick to the rocks well enough to kind of come out on this plateau. I'll go ahead and run right up to this ridge just to get a look at the backdrop, although it may not help a whole lot. And I hope I don't have to fight a bear. Oh yeah, he's coming. We're probably not going to fight him, but I'm going to run down here real quick and show you what the uh, Loverstone bonus is. And this is the last of the four skill shrines, or uh, stone signs, I'm sorry, skill shrines. Um, it's the last of the stone signs that improve skills. Uh, however, the Loverstone is all skills. 
Um, so the first three are pretty obvious if you want to level up your magic, if you want to level up your stealth, if you want to level up your combat. Um, they are all 20% increase. The lovers is only a 15% increase, but it's, it's all across all three of those. And uh, now we're going to go see about uh, one of the next stones. The next stone is the Steed Stone. And uh, you can see that it's right up here next to Solitude. The Steed Stone... Uh, oh, I guess I can't scroll up all the way if I'm uh, zoomed in there. It's going to give you guys a nice bird's eye view. Um, the easiest way to get to it, uh, there's a path that comes out of Solitude. And it either doubles back on itself, or you can take the path on down and it'll eventually come up here. Uh, either way is about as quick. Um... I'd probably actually take the underside route. Just stick to this until you're kind of getting close to that lake and then just turn straight north. And then it's kind of on its own little, uh, little, uh, upward piece of land here. A little bit of a cliff. And, uh, of course, then it's got a nice little backdrop into the ocean. The Steed Stone, uh, allows you to carry more and not suffer movement penalty from armor. So uh, a great choice for uh, the warrior who doesn't necessarily care about leveling his skills up quickly. Um, you know, or the heavy armor user, I should say. Maybe the battle mage for all that matter. Um, just to kind of lighten the penalty of having heavy armor, both for in movement and how much it weighs. Um, or it could be somewhat situational if you plan on you know spending some game time a couple hours of just doing random dungeon runs you might want to come grab this just so you can get you know that little bit extra out of your haul all right so to revisit it on the map real quick it's uh it's right up here on the top um a little north of solitude all right and next we have the apprentice stone and uh it's right out here in the marshy area outside of morthal um and the uh, the easiest way to get to it, of course, is carriage to Morthal, and then kind of split out across uh, some of this water. And uh, it's pretty much just right out in the middle of a swamp. It's kind of easy to get to if you just kind of draw a straight line. Um, I would warn you that I've ran into some kind of nasty things out here, but I'm about level 23. I kind of expect the open areas between towns and some of these simpler things to scale, so I, I don't really think you'll have to fight anything too difficult. The uh, Apprentice Sign allows you to recover Magicka faster, but are more susceptible to magic damage. Um, so you'll take higher damage when you're fighting casters, however you'll also regenerate your Magicka better all the time. Um, this I think is something that's pretty situational. I think this is the type of stone, and I think there are a few of them that are like this, uh, where you would come and get this if you're on a particularly tough fight. If you're on a quest that you really wanted to complete, and you had to kill some guy that you died on a couple times already, um, and of course you're a, a caster like my uh, main walkthrough character, then uh, you'll probably want to come snatch this, I don't know, maybe look at some of the other stone choices uh, depending on what kind of fight you have, and uh, get it just for that fight, and then probably go back to some of your skill increase uh, signs. So uh, to revisit where it was on the map, um, right outside of Morthal, it's kind of in this little bit of like a... a four corners or like five corners of the land masses here, right where they kind of all come together. It's on the peak that four different little masses face. Okay. Next we have the Lord Stone, which is kind of a pain in the butt to get to. It's the first thing I'm going to mention about it. Um, pretty much all of this outside cliff is all sheer uh, mountain. Um, I, you know, thought it was going to be great to come from Dawnstar especially since there's another one kind of close to Dawnstar, and thought it'd be great to just come down south across this open plain and then kind of try to find my way up the mountain. Uh, that turned out not to be too easy, though. A uh, matter of fact, I ended up doing it the hardest way possible, and I came around this uh, west side of the mountain, and I had to come all the way down to uh, where you see this terrain glitch out a little bit before I could uh, actually get up the mountain and come up to the Lordstone. Um, this way looks like it would have been easier if you're coming from Dawnstar, although I'd probably recommend just hoofing it from Whiterun, just doing a, a straight uh, walk right up the side of this mountain. It seems longer, but when you come down from Dawnstar, it loops around, and that's really not ideal. So, the Lordstone, um, it's kind of up on this little temple platform that's pretty easy to see once you, uh, once you come from the right direction, which is going to be that direction. Um, and of course, as you see, there's a couple beds and a couple dead bandits. This place is protected by a couple kind of easy-to-kill bandits. 
The uh, bonus of the Lord Stone uh, allows you to resist magicka and physical damage. And uh, I believe that this is, uh, let's see, it's 50 points of damage resistance, so I think the equivalent of like 50 armor. And it's 25% magic resistance, so roughly half of what the Breton's magic resistance is, uh, naturally. Alright, one more time, We're right up here on this pain in the butt side of the mountain. Alright, next. Next is my personal favorite, and that is the Tower Stone. And this is not necessarily my favorite because of its its bonus, but uh, just because of its location. The location specifically, I really like. Um, you can see it's pretty much directly between Dawnstar and Winterhold, making either one a decent run for it. Uh, note that Dawnstar, you go through a little bit rougher terrain and kind of have to double back. I'd probably advise Winterhold, because you kind of start up high on this mountain, and you can kind of drop down easily and... Uh, and then this is a little island. It doesn't show it real well here, but uh, you kind of have to cross over on a couple of parts of land or the water on this side of the island and then come up to uh, the upper side of uh, the little mountainous area where you can reach the Tower Stone. Now, the Tower Stone, um, let's see, this says you have the option to automatically open Expert or Lower Locks. Um, I believe that this is a once per day. It's saying automatically is uh, a little bit misleading. Um, so obviously that's going to be your one-time snatch for uh, the master chest that you wrote down in your notebook you found the other day but couldn't unlock then. Um, or if you plan on cranking out, you know, a couple uh, a couple dungeons in higher level areas, just doing some random stuff, then you know maybe that's one of the ones you think about taking. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna revisit. Uh, the location again on the map, and then I'm going to show you why this one's my favorite one as far as location goes. So again on the map, it's right at the top of this island. You can come up from the bottom side, right between Winterhold and Dawnstar, the Tower Stone. Now the reason I really like this one is because, uh, hey, it's got it's got kind of a nice view. Uh, with the weather effects, it's a little bit ruined. I can't see real far. But uh, there's a little fun option here. If you come off, you can kind of see an open water area right there. And uh, they did your jump just right. to let you get it. You can fall right down in the water and survive. So, uh, you know if you're just on a on a little journey, coming from, say, Winter Hold over, you can uh, hit the Tower Stone, jump off of it, and then, you know, progress over to Dawnstar. Alright, moving right along.